as president-elect Joe Biden announced several administration nominations, including Obama-era officials such as former National Security Advisor Susan Rice, as White House Domestic Policy Council Director and ex-Chief of Staff Dennis McDonough as Veterans Affairs Secretary. The diverse nominations and appointments were laid out in a statement from Biden's presidential transition team. Rice had been a contender for Secretary of State, but she was expected to face intense opposition from Republicans in the Senate confirmation process over her role in the Benghazi crisis of 2012 and that prestigious cabinet role went to close Biden advisor Antony Blinken. The United Arab Emirates ranked 15 in the UN's 2020 Global Knowledge Index, which measures education, research and development, and innovation in 138 countries around the world. The top countries in this year's index were Switzerland, which placed first, the United States second, and Finland third. The African countries of Chad, Angola, and Mauritania were ranked the lowest on the list. The UAE was the top-rated Arab country, while Saudi Arabia and Bahrain placed in the top 50 as 42 and 43 respectively. The state of Qatar, the world's largest exporter of lingrified natural gas, will see its budget surplus wiped out in 2021 amid low energy prices due to COVID-19. Conservative estimates of 40 US dollar a barrel for next year mean Qatar projects as fossil fuel revenues will shrink 27.6% in 2021 to 32.4 billion US dollar, wiping out 2020 surplus of 500 million riyals. Qatar's gross domestic product will decline by 2.6% in 2020 because of the spread of the COVID-19 virus and the decline in energy prices. The finance ministry said the project in the economy would grow by 2.2% in 2020. 2021. One of the world's biggest solar parks in Dubai has hired the Zell UAB to turn desert heat into electricity after sundown. The Swedish company will provide energy storage facilities for an expansion project at the Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Solar Park. It will be the first commercial unit using solar power generated from the 950 megawatt project to melt and store energy in a block of recycled aluminium at 600 degrees Celsius during the day. Google racked up another record European Union fine, this time a 100 million euro, which is 121 million US dollar penalty from France's privacy watchdog over the way it manages cookies on its search engine. The companies were given a three-month ultimate to make changes to the information they provide to users or face additional daily fines of 100,000 euros. Google has also faced intense scrutiny from the European Commission, having been fined more than 8.2 billion euros in three antitrust cases. The coronavirus pandemic and the Black Lives Matter movement topped the list of conservation topics on Twitter in a terminus year. In a summary of trends, Twitter said the hashtag COVID-19 and other variations were tweeted nearly 400 million times, while hashtag stay home was the third biggest hashtag of the year. According to Twitter, the number two hashtag of 2020 was Black Lives Matter, which spread worldwide after the death of George Floyd at the hands of police in Minneapolis. The Sultanate of Amman will exempt nationals of 103 counties from needing an entry visa for a stay of up to 10 days in a move to support tourism and shore up its struggling economy. Royal Oman Police said on its Twitter account, visitors must have a confirmed hotel conservation, health insurance and return ticket. Currently, only citizens of five GCC countries can enter without a visa, while New Zealand nationals can spend up to three months in Oman and enter the country on a visa without paying any fee. Human rights organizations have raised the alarm after emergence of videos of torture, beheadings and other abuses, much of it shared over social networks from the recent war between Azerbaijan and Armenia in Nagorno-Karabakh. In a report, Amnesty International said it had authenticated 22 videos from the conflict that depict extrajudicial executions, the mistreatment of prisoners of war and other captives, and the secretion of the dead bodies of enemy soldiers. Amnesty said it had digitally verified videos showing depictions and the decoration of corpses, although it stopped short of identifying many of the victims or the circumstances of their deaths. 
researchers looking for an elusive species of twigged whale said they think they have found another new, previously unknown species of Mexico's western Pacific coast. Dr. J. Paolo, a senior fishery scientist at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, said the baked whales both look and sound different from the approximately 23 other known species. The team was sailing with the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society in mid-November in hopes of identifying the source of an unidentified coaster sign. Conservationists are working to rescue giraffes stranded on an island in Lake Boringo in western Kenya after heavy rains led to the flooding of the rangeland habitat, threatening the animals without drowning. Relentless rains have increased lake levels, which began to swallow up the peninsula where the giraffes have been living. The conservationists used the barge to transport one of the giraffes the four miles to its new home, a 4,400-acre fence sanctuary within the 44,000-acre roof conservancy. Scientists may have solved one of the paleontology's enduring mysteries, the evolutionary origins of the flying reptiles called Petrosaurus that ruled the skies at the same time that dinosaurs dominated the land. Researchers said on Wednesday a poorly understood Jurassic period reptile group called Logipetids, known from a few partial skeletons from the United States, Argentina, Brazil, and Madagascar, appears to have been the evolutionary resources to Petrosaurus. Legiptides, first appearing about 237 million years ago, were generally small and may have been bipedal insect eaters. A new study suggests that orchestra players and chorus members can stand a little closer to each other with no safety concerns. According to the German news agency, the Bavarian Radio Symphony Orchestra announced that a study in which it participated with researchers from the university hospitals in Erlangen and Munich in South Germany found that musicians should keep a significant distance while standing face to face. In order to test how wind instruments praise out aerosols, the researchers used the main components of e-cigarettes, usually exhaled, to determine the spread of emissions. The Russian Hermitage boasts about sheltering over 50 cats and pampering them with food, a dedicated washing machine, and great health care. The cats even have a page on Wikipedia like influencers. The little animals are used to the museum's visitors who treat them with love. The museum is home to 3 million works of art, artifacts, and sculptures spread across buildings including the Winter Palace. According to the Hermitage staff, these cats know the displayed works more than experts. The Netherlands National Art Institution, the Rikis Amusement, is to open its first major exhibition telling the stories of slaves and the Dutch people who enslaved them, as its director begs a government initiative to return thousands of looted treasures to former colonial lands. Using 140 objects, ranging from two Rembrandt portraits of slave owners jointly owned with the lover to a display of ankle chains used to keep people captive, the exhibition will examine 10 lives caught up in the Dutch slave trade between the early 17th century and 1863 when it was finally made illegal in Suriname and Antilles. Business travelers will face fines of up to 20,000 euros if they do not apply for special permits for visits to conferences or exhibitions in the European Union if there is no Brexit deal for the service industry, industry leaders have warned. Make UK, which represents some of the biggest manufacturers in the UK, said it's concerned that the issue of business travel for service engineers will not only arise in a no-deal scenario, but could arise if a trade deal comes home without a full services section. Service engineers are the army workers who are called out at short notice to EU factories, offices and industrial sites to fix everything from hospital scanners to lifts and aircraft parts.